Breaking news, everyone. Cabling assemblies are finally here. This is something that PTC has talked about for a while for Creo Parametric. I have just downloaded and installed Creo 12.4.2.0, the latest date code. Let me close out of my About Creo Parametric dialog box. Here I am in an assembly. I want to start cabling. So let's go to the Applications menu and then choose our cabling command. And here we have the warning message. This is going to go away in a moment. I recommend that you go into the help in order to read this some more. But as it says in here, we have harnesses, assemblies, spools, cosmetics, and terminators have been reworked. Those are actually part files now. And there is a conversion utility. Okay, before I, when I've gone in here, this has not stayed open, but I'm glad it's staying open this time. Uh, let's see, do I want to learn more? I'm going to click no in order to get out of there. And so now I want to create a brand new harness. Let's click on the create harness command. You will notice that in cabling mode, by the way, the icons have gotten a, a refresh. They look nice. They look vibrant. I love the new look. So let's choose create harness. And now we have our create component dialog box. You'll notice that it is defaulting to a subassembly. If you want to keep your old legacy workflows and use harness parts, you can change to that. You can change to part from this dialog box. You'll notice that the subtype is harness. If I hover my mouse, you'll notice in the tooltip that we also have that alert that this is new. That's also what that blue triangle looks like or uh, showing on the side here. But anyhow, let's let me just use the default file name. I will click the OK button. And here is the default harness assembly that it is suggesting to me. I will say OK. At some point, I will create my own custom harness. But now if I take a look in my cabling tree, we can see that we have our cabling assembly and it's got its own unique icon for this model type. I can expand it and you can see that we have our assembly default datums. So that is one of the ways of creating a brand new uh, harness assembly. There are a couple other ways, I think. I will show at least one of the other different ways. But also, if you take a look at the icons, again, I mentioned the refresh. You'll notice that there are a lot of those blue triangles indicating changes have been made. And so, for example, here's the spools command. And I'm going to click on, let me, oh, wait, did I activate the harness? Let me activate the harness. And now I should be able to create a brand new spool. And right now it's going to import a spool. And if you take a look in the dialog box, it wants to import a part file. So spools are now parts. And to be specific, they are bulk parts. If you have used bulk items in the past, that's for things that you are not going to create geometry for. Let's say that you are going to add some paint or you're going to add some lubricant or even stuff like staples. You can create those as bulk items and then control the parameters for them. That's the same way with spools. I'm going to cancel out of importing a part. Let's go to the drop down and I'm going to create a spool. Here we have the new create spool dialog box. Also throughout the cabling environment, they, they really have updated the interface. There were a bunch of, you know, many managers in the past and sort of old looking stuff. And now it's, it's got the modern UI look. And so for creating a spool, I've got all the different subtypes. I will leave the default wire, but like you had before, you can create cable spools, ribbon cable spools, and then the other types of spools for cosmetics like markers and tie wrap and sheath. I will choose, let's choose create and add. And this opens up the electrical parameters dialog box. There's where you can specify different properties like the thickness and the minimum bend radius and apply a color to it. I'm just going to click the OK button out of there. And now if we take a look in our model tree, 
you can see our new spool created as a part instead of being created as it was before as an assembly level feature. But anyhow, one of the advantages of creating this as a part you can probably figure out is that it makes it easier to manage in Windchill. You can manage these as objects with your workflows and promotions and releases, all that sort of stuff for your different spools as opposed to having to try to manage the old .spl files in some kind of manner. But anyhow, uh, that is all I'm going to show. I need to educate myself more on some of the other different things in here. Let me close out of the cabling environment. I'm going to show you another way of creating a cabling assembly, and that's by going to the File New button. One thing that you could not do before is create a harness part on its own. A harness part could only be created in an assembly and it could only be created, or excuse me, it could only be modified or opened inside of another assembly. But now when I go to file new, I can choose assembly. And now we have this new type here for harness. And so I'll just leave the default name. Let's click the OK button. Now I have my harness assembly created. And when I go to applications and then cabling, again, we get the message here about the updates. Let me activate this harness. So here again, I'm activating the harness assembly at the top level. And at this point, I can assemble my different connectors and I can route wires. So a harness assembly can exist completely on its own. Let me close out of here. And since we have access to the model tab, you have all the other different options that you have for working in an assembly model. But let me show you one last thing. Let's see, what did I want to go? Okay, let me go to, uh, this is a harness assembly that I made in some videos from a couple years ago where I went through the entire cabling harness process. If you take a look at my model tree inside of this assembly, I created a harness assembly so I could use some top-down design techniques like using a skeleton model and then I have my different connectors assembled. And then here is the harness part and here are the spools that are created as assembly level features. Well, let me open this in its own separate window and let me zoom in and so you can see the different harness objects. Let's jump into the cabling application again from the applications menu. And we're getting this note that we are again in the updated cabling application. Let me click no out of there. Let me activate my harness. And when I activate my harness part, we're going to get the warning here that, hey, starting with Career 12, harnesses have been upgraded to assemblies. And this is now a legacy harness part. It does recommend that you click on the Help Center. I'm going to file a ticket with PTC because this actually directs you to the wrong place. It directs you to the harness application as, in other words, the, the flat harness functionality. It needs to point you to the stuff inside of the cabling uh, information. But anyhow, yes, we need to convert. And I'll be honest, I had trouble finding the convert command. And it's supposed to be in uh, a shortcut menu, which I think they mean like a right mouse button menu, but I kept on trying to look for it in a right mouse button menu. If you want to convert, you can find the convert command by going to the search bar and typing in convert good I can spell today and here is the convert to assembly command and this will enable you to convert a legacy harness part to an assembly so that is another method of creating and using your harness assemblies I have not tried this personally myself yet but anyhow I just wanted to give you this late breaking news that now in Creo parametric 12.4.2, this latest build code, you now have harness assemblies uh, which are replacing the old harness parts that you have known for 
decades now in Creole Parametric, and this should make things a heck of a lot easier. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments.